Hi guys, it's me, Alex, and welcome to our Friday Live on Schedule Live, just because I have approximately 45 minutes before going and enjoying Friday night. Well, what is the topic today? I'm going to wait for a few seconds until you guys going to join me, maybe share with uh, other groups. But today we are going to be talking about driver qualification files, right? Why is it so important? And I will be sharing my screen as always, right, guys? So look at this. Today we will be talking why is it important to understand the process of hiring? Why is it important to get qualified drivers? And how to prevent that retention of the drivers, right? Turnover of the drivers. So I will be back in 30 seconds with reminding you that next Sunday we do have a webinar on how to open trucking company. Well, and I am back. I see that some people are joining me. Hopefully, I'll see some comments. And again, stay um, focused in talking. And let's talk about, do we have any special requirements before we hire the driver? So let's look at the screen. Well, we are regulated by Federal Motor Care um, Safety Administration, right? So there is a specific rules which are applying to hiring the drivers, right? So let's look at this. Well, first, it should be at least minimum age of 21, right? So as much as we want to hire drivers with uh, 19 years old, 20 years old, uh, 18 years old, well, we still have the minimum age of 21. Uh, second requirements that the driver has to be able to speak and read in English sufficiently so he can actually converse with the general public to understand high level traffic signs, signals in English language, also talk to the officers when he gets stopped, and to make sure that he can read the reports and provide their records. Secondary, we need to make sure that he is qualified, that he has a special training to operate a commercial motor vehicle, right? So he needs to go through special school. He needs to pass examination. The fourth rule is that he needs to have special skills. So that means when we hire the driver, we do need to actually check on his skills and i'm gonna add myself to the screen because it's like it's hard for me it's life i have to make sure i also see myself so we need to make sure that he passed the road test exactly with our equipment the type of equipment that we're gonna give to him and that he can do all the skills uh sets of the road test right back in that he needs to make sure that he know how to uh start the truck right how to open the hood how to connect truck and trailer all those things have to be checked for each company some drivers come to me and they say, well, Alex, I've been in driving for 15 years. I have experience. Well, I understand. But now you come to work for my company and this is something which is required. I'm going to remove myself for the second. CDL, right? So CDL has to be valid. You can have a temporary CDL when you just finish the school. When you switch in the state, you still need to have the valid CDL. What else? 
well, we need to make sure that we check on all the violations, right? So let's see all the violations that have been uh, going after this driver, right? Uh, we're not talking just about AMVR records, but we also going about PSP records, right? That federal motor carrier side, which keeps all the violations of each driver. So every time driver gets stopped on the road, it goes on his CDL record. We're going to touch up on this few minutes later. Also, we need to make sure that he is not disqualified by any means and also that he is physically qualified. So what does it mean physically qualified? Well, we know that we need to have medical examination, right? Every driver has to have a medical card and every driver has to have valid CDL. So let's say we found that perfect candidate, right? He is over 21. He finished the school and he's coming to you. Is this the only thing you need to check or do you really need to make sure that you are going after certain rules and regulations? Well, let's start that first, the driver fitness, it goes under the part 383 and 391. What are those numbers? FMCSA has a lot of rules and regulations and every topic has specific numbers. So Anything to do with the driver qualification will go under the part 383 and 391. So when, for example, you get stopped and you get violations and it starts with 383.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, that means that it has something to do with driver qualifications, right? So we need to make sure that these violations, and I just gave you some example. For example, not having appropriate commercial driver license, a CDL license, right? What if, for example, driver had a tanker uh, load, right? Tanker commodity, but he did not have endorsement on his CDL. Here, he might be a great driver. Dispatcher made mistake. Dispatcher booked this commodity for the driver who does not have endorsement. So here you go. Look at this. This doesn't mean that yes, driver has a CDL, but he is not legally able to take that load. So that's why I'm not just giving you guys uh, knowledge on how to book the loads, how to negotiate the loads, because the pro dispatcher needs to know all these little things, how this is going to affect safety and compliance of your company that you're dispatching, right? Well, he needs to make sure that he's medically qualified to operate CMV. And a lot of people, after being in logistics for so long, still asking me, what does it mean CMV? Guys, commercial, motor, vehicle, as simple as that. If you guys don't know some terminology nowadays, you can Google that stuff, right? Put, what does it mean CMV? But don't be so un, kind of, um, I don't even know how to say it, unprofessional. After six months in business, one year in business, you receive some paperwork from DOT, you receive some paperwork from FMCSA, or even in a rate confirmation, it says, well, driver of CMV, and you're asking me, Alex, what is a CMV? Well, again, commercial motor vehicle. So... Statistics are kind of sad because we do have lots and lots of road uh, inspections, which we're getting lots and lots of violation due to driver qualifications, due to not maintaining driver qualification files. And I can tell you this, that those fines are getting higher higher and higher. That's why most of the companies nowadays, if you do want to survive, the knowledge of your hiring process is a must. And you can do it two different ways. You can have it in-house hiring process. So that means that you're going to learn all the rules. You're going to make sure that you have a person who does all the hiring. Make sure you have all the files maintaining. And nowadays, 
we all move into the digital filing, right? We're not going to be having all those folders with bunch of faxes, paperwork, physical papers, right? So everything is moving to the digital format. Why? Because FMCSA eventually, and I think by 2024, is going to make it mandatory that all the files have to be in a digital form because it's going to be easier for them to find the mistakes, to get information from you. And nowadays with the technology, it's no need for us to keep having those heavy folders for each driver. Because remember, we still need to keep them for three years, even after the driver was just an applicant. Even if the driver already doesn't work for us, we still have to maintain those files in our office, right? So all of this is going back to what? To red flag violations. And 75% of violations, when you guys get audited, it comes back to driver qualification files, DQ files. You probably heard that so many times, DQ files, DQ files. So what is the DQ files? Driver qualification files. Let's look at some of the basic, uh, for example, uh, violations, right? While operating without a um, driver license, operating with more than one driver license, right? CDL, driving while disqualified, while well, maybe your CDL is already not valid and you're still driving. Unqualified driver, right? Maybe you don't have a medical card. Maybe you do not uh, have CDL school and you're still driving the commercial motor vehicle. Driver uses or in possession of the drugs, right? All of this qualification are going under the basic uh, driver fitness category. So one more time, FMCSA has a different categories. And maybe right now, you know what? Let me let me see if I can. Um, while I'm gonna be talking, um, we're gonna go over what has to be done in order, right? So let's go through that, and then I will actually show you the FMCSA website with all the categories, because you guys need to start understand how many categories we have, what goes under each category, and hopefully your safety and compliance gonna be in a good hands. But let's go back to driver hiring. So first, what do we need to start with? First, we need employment application, right? So every driver has to fill out employment application, right? You need to also make sure that you check on a previous employment verification. This is mandatory. So if your driver was working in five different companies within the last three years, he has to list each company there and you have to actually contact them. And you have 30 days after your application is submitted for this driver, you have 30 days to verify all the information. Driver has to give you permission because he has to put his social security, he has to actually put his signature, and he's giving you permission to contact his previous employer. And why do we wanna do this, guys? Why is this so crucial? Lots of times driver is going to come to you and he's going to say, well, Alex, you know what? I'm working for my friend. I don't want him to know that I'm coming and working for you. Please, can you not do this uh, employment verification? I'm a good driver. Everything is good. And a lot of us like, okay, he's coming to me as a driver. It's a shortage of the driver. I should feel lucky. And we miss this step. Or we simply fake it, which is the worst mistake you can do. Because from my own experience and from data, guys, every driver is going to tell you that he's the best driver, that he has no violations, that he had no accidents, that he never had a damage to truck or trailer. So if you guys are going to miss this step, you're actually going to miss a big part of knowledge which can help you in the hiring process. Because a lot of times it's better for you not to hire underqualified driver 
you'd better not to hire him because it's going to cost you thousands and thousands of dollars. So let's go back to this. This previous employer verification, this is mandatory for each driver and for every trucking company that he worked previously to you. That's why we check on PSP records, because a lot of times driver is not going to be honest with you and he is not going to tell you where he was working all these years. When you run the PSP record, it's going to show every time he was stopped for violation or any inspection, even good inspection, it's going to show the company name, when did it happen, and it, if it was clean or not. So that's something which has to be done within 30 days and you have to do it no matter what mandatory not optional it's not like oh alex telling me no alex is not telling you federal motor carrier safety administration telling you but why are they telling you because after reviewing all the data on accidents on uh, fatalities on people going out of business they found that 75 percent of violations are due to hiring process in trucking industry so that's why they made it mandatory to make sure that you guys do these steps no matter what then after that you need to check on what mvr motor vehicle record of the driver before hiring you need to make sure that you are checking on his medical card and please pay attention the doctor who gives him medical card or the office which actually gives him medical card is on national registry of the certified medical examiners. It's can me, it cannot be just any doctor. You go to your family doctor and you say, well, can you do medical card for me because I'm a CDL driver, you know, and your doc doctor is like, okay, do you have a form? And yeah, you can print out that form, right? And you give to your doctor, but if he is not, on one more time look at this national registry of the certified medical examiner's verification list this is not a valid medical card and remember we have medical card for two years every two years you have to renew it do not wait till the last minute renew at least 15 days at least three weeks before it's expiring because sometimes you're driving and you think that your vision is still good. You think that everything is good and you might have problem with uh, maybe high blood pressure. Maybe maybe recently things, I don't know, your vision is uh, not good enough and you need to go through the steps. So do not wait till the last minute. For people who have some medical conditions, medical card is not going to be given for two years. It's going to be given probably six months or one year, and they have to go and revisit, especially if they are taking medication. That medication is going to be listed if that medication can affect drug test or if that medication is crucial for driver to stay safe on the road. For example, driver has a diabetes. He's on insulin, right? He needs to take insulin. He, well, he can still drive. But you as a company, you need to make sure that this driver has a break in the morning maybe or at night and he cannot miss that. That's why we need a full copy of medical card, not that little tiny a piece of paper which usual drivers bring to you and they like already look like a little piece of whatever, right? Again. Most of the companies, when audits come, they say, well, the driver gave me this. I could not get the full examination uh, report. Guys, you do have the phone number. Who is a doctor? Is You can contact. Driver can give you permission to get the full report, or he has to provide you a full report. This is something which you cannot make up story and excuses, right? This is a safety and compliance. We're dealing with federal laws. Okay. After that, we need to make sure that we ask the driver about all the violations. And we are hoping that he is actually so honest with us. But remember, as I told you, we have a lot of people who are not going to tell you the truth. That's why you're going to register with a PSP, pre-employment screening program with the Federal Motor Carrier Administration, and you're going to run an extra 
optional report on each of your driver. Besides this, I'm also running background check on each driver, no matter what. I don't care if you're my friend or you're not my friend. I don't care if I know you for 10 years. I am running the background check on each my driver. For running any checks, you just have to remember as a company, you need to have written authorization, right? So all of this is done. And finally, we're going to make sure that we are doing that road test, right? We need to make sure we have the copy of what? Of the driver license, CDL front and back. We need to make sure that we have the statement of on-duty hours. What does it mean? That means the driver tells us when the last time he was operating commercial motor vehicle, right? Because for people special in Chicago, remember those days? Your drivers would flew in in the morning and afternoon he was already loading, right? We're talking about hiring process. We're talking about checking MVR. So you can do that, of course, before the driver gets there. And you have to make sure that you receive that what? Negative drug test. Nowadays, we are adding an extra measure. Before we can even bring the driver to our office, we need to make sure that he is actually okay in a clearing house, right? That he's not prohibited to operate that commercial motor vehicle, right? And there is all other rules. And I did um, I did video probably a few months ago, I think in, um, in winter. So find my clearing house. What is a clearing house? What are the rules there? But that's now we're going two driver qualification files. So what do we have to make sure? We need to make sure we do all the pre-employment procedures. Then we have to make sure we are doing our annual review, right? Every 12 months, we're going to do what? We're going to double check on his violations. We're going to run his MVR. And also we're going to make sure that we monitor expiration of his medical card. People asking me, Alex, is that enough? Just do it once a year to do MVR record, to do PSP record. Well, guys, nowadays in trucking, unfortunately not. You want to succeed, you should do it at least quarterly, right? That's why big, big mega carriers, they use third-party services or they have in-house safety and compliance who checks on the drivers every quarter, sometimes even monthly. Why? Because let's say driver was not on duty when he got the DUI. Driver maybe did not pay child support and his CDL is already not valid, but you hired him three months ago. So things can happen. Sometimes people lose their CDL not due to accidents, not due to not renewing medical card, but we have other issues which can actually uh, cause the loss of the CDL. Child support is one of them. The person does not pay child support. The state will take your CDL away. And usually drivers are on the road. Sometimes they don't even live in a house where they receive the mail. And a lot of times he's already driving on um, not active CDL. So that's why you want to stay in this business, especially in this market. Hiring process is important. Verification of what is going on is important. Every one of us, doesn't matter who it is, which company it is, doesn't matter if it's one driver, 10 drivers, 200 drivers, have to make sure that we do the same. We have to meet driver qualification requirements. We have to make sure the driver license is valid. Medical certificate is valid. Certificate of any violations is has to be checked. Annual MVR and annual review. So those are things which goes no matter where you at, which state, what kind of equipment. I don't care if you are driving. I don't care if you are a reefer. I don't really care if you only have power only unit. This is our regulations given to us by federal government and everybody 
has to meet this criteria. I can tell you this. If you guys are listening to me and you've been following me, I am very big on you start using resources, right? And if you're going to go to Atom CSA, you can actually find this file, which calls driver qualification file, right? Everything that has to do with uh, driver qualification files, it will be 49391. This is just the number. So, you know, when you're talking about driver, it's 391, anything hiring. And this is a great, great form, guys. You have initial, look at this, initial documents, and it actually tells you what has to be done. So it tells you application has to be there. And here's the role. Test the road has to be done. And it's also tell you how long you need to keep this file in your office for each driver. It's even have the link. So look at this. When you click on each link, it's going to take you to FMCSA, right? It's taking you to all these rules and regulations, right? And you guys can read and you can learn. So there is not an excuse nowadays not to know what has to be done. Everything is here. This is free. You don't have to pay me. You don't have to pay federal government. You don't have to pay the third party. You can learn this on yourself. Look at this. It even tells you ongoing process. What do you have to do? Well, annually, you need to check the MVR. And you must retain the commutation for three years. You need to review them. Again, at least once every three months to 12 months, it's explained to you and also tells you for how long you do need to keep this on file, right? You need to have all of this medical examination, three years. So all of these guys are available on FMCSA. Well, I'm just going to put an advertisement for one of our classes and I'm going to just log into FMCSA and show you guys where you can find all of this, okay? So hopefully it will be helpful. And if you guys have questions, please ask me because I will be answering a few questions. I do have like another 15, 20 minutes before we will be done. <music>so guys let's look if any of you have a company and that's what i'm covering in my safety and compliance classes you should be familiar with safety planner right so you need to create one for your company but again this is free you don't even have to have mc to use resources and that's what i'm talking here right now I'm not going to go over how to get your planner, what you need to have, because this is not a safety and compliance. But I really want you to understand that if you guys go here and you click on the form library, right? First, you have all the related websites. Look at this. If you need to know something about CDL, here you go. The approved CDL schools programs. If you need to know anything about drug and alcohol, this is a link, right? Registration, new entrant, how to pass new entrant, what is going to be asked, 
all the resources, look at this, then data queue, compliance, safety, uh, pre-employment, PSP, right? Remember, I just told you how to register for PSP, URC. Uh, all of this is, guys, here. UCR is going to come up soon, right? All of this is here. This is all links. People asking me how to deal with a cross board, right? So it was Mexico, for example, hazmat materials. Guys, everything is here. But I want to pay attention to this form library. Look at this. Guys, this is free. If you still do not have, for example, accident register. Wow, look at this. It's right here. You don't have to pay me. You can just go here and get it free, right? Let's say you don't have the application. You don't really have, oh, annual review for driving record, right? So let's open it up. Show in folder. Let's open it up. Wow. Look at this right here. You don't have to pay me. You don't have to pay somebody else. You're just going to use it, put the driver name, and that's it. So all of the stuff is available here. Uh, driver application for employment. How many of you are trying to pay somebody, guys, for application? Guys, it's free. This is from federal government. You can download. You can put your company address, uh, name and address here, and that's it. you done. How easy it is. So one more time, guys. This is all on FMCSA. If you go to Planner and you go to resources and forms also you have all the videos and if you come into tracking even learning the glossary of tracking terminology right all of this all of this is a must so i am not only on a mission to change dispatchers but to change tracking all of us have to be on a mission to get educated and Yes, it's easier when you come, for example, to my class, right? It's four classes, four hours each class, very intense. Of course, we're going to go through everything and it has a structure. But again, you don't really have to go even for my class. If you want to have a full picture and you want to have my experience, yes, you're going to learn a lot. It's no price. It's no price on the mistakes which already have been done for you. It's no price on the knowledge after for somebody being in this industry for 10 years, right? It's no real price on somebody who can actually teach and share with you. But lots of you are so advanced and intelligent and you guys can learn this on your own. So if you spend 20 minutes a day and you're going to choose a topic, let's say hiring process, well, you can learn it on your own. Or maybe you can become so good that you guys can even start teaching the classes. You will need to uh, get a few certifications, you know. I got my from Florida State for being a national safety director in trucking, but it is possible, right? So everything is there. So I just want you to remember that filing, I mean hiring process is crucial in trucking. If you guys do not know the steps, if you're going to miss some steps, well, you're going to pay fines. You're going to be hiring drivers, which are going to ruin your company within a few weeks. If you're lucky, you will survive a few months. Even if you've still been doing so great by faking all the paperwork, but not doing all the steps, believe me, one day you're going to unfortunately have that accident and that accident might have some fatalities and that uh nuclear verdicts which we hear in all the time are actually happening and why are they happening a lot of times 75 percent because of hiring process because of people not going after the rules People closing their eyes on the medical card or they closing their eyes on the certification or simply not checking on his previous record with previous company on his PSP or simply just thinking, you know what? I'm going to be okay. I'm going to play that game in magical trucking. Guys, it's no such a thing as a magical trucking special in a market like this. So my message today 
get educated, get compliant. If you compliant, what's happening? Your insurance rates are going to go lower. When your safety is in the good hands and you have a good numbers, brokers want to work with you. People checking on your safety, not just brokers, not just insurance agent, but even the drivers, the good driver, he's not going to go to the company who does not pay attention to safety. Because if he is a good professional driver, he wants to make sure that he works for the company who maintains his the trucks, the trailers, and the company who knows what they're doing because he is a professional driver. And because we have a holiday coming up, I just want to make sure that I do say thank you to all the drivers on the road. Because guys, without you, we cannot be that sassy dispatchers. Without you, we cannot be that sassy owners of the trucking companies. Without you guys, as a regular American person, I would not be enjoying probably my barbecue tomorrow. And without you, I would not have a lot of things around the house because just of you guys, we have everything we need in America. And I want to make sure that everyone understands this. We appreciate your hard work. We know it's not easy. We're not trying to make it harder for you. We're trying to make sure that the companies that you work for understand that your safety is number one priority. We want to make sure that every holiday you came come back to your family, that you not involved in crashes because your company doesn't want to spend money on the uh, brakes or on the tires. We want to make sure you come back to your family because your dispatcher knows that you need to rest and he's not pushing you, faking the logbooks, giving you the loads, which is impossible to do just because he only thinks about money, money, money. And hopefully we're going to get rid of all those scammers. And I don't care where you located, guys. I don't care which country you located because people start getting very upset with me. Yes, we can still run honest trucking. And if every one of you would follow the rules, would improve their negotiation skills, we don't have to fake logbooks. We do not have to fake drug tests. We do not have to hire dispatchers who have no clue about USA geography or don't even know what does it mean to go and sleep somewhere on the side of the road. We would not be dealing with people who come to just make a quick money in this industry, right? But that does not just take me. I mean, I have already most of what? 14,000 subscribers, and hopefully each of you are sharing the same mission. So if you're still watching me and you did not subscribe, please subscribe, like, and hopefully together we can change trucking for better. And other uh, things I uh, would like to mention that tomorrow, starting tomorrow, we have 72-hour sale because of the Labor Weekend. So we're going to have uh, $50 off for safety class, IFTA class. We have $100 off for combination IFTA and safety. Those classes are in October and also for our October class. Sale is going to start tomorrow, 9 a.m. So everything will be posted on our website. So make sure not to miss it. I am very proud of all our... Um, of all our... Um, students in our August class. I know that we had intense few uh, few weeks, but they are doing well. Also, I want to show you something that was added recently. Let me see if I can do it now and share it with you, right? So look at this. You know that I love all the things around me, right? So we actually added the store with our uh, creation. So I always tell you the same slogan I use in my classes, which comes from me that pro dispatchers do need to have the plan. So we have all the products available. Every process is going to go to help Ukraine. So whatever money we're making on selling this cute, uh, we're made 
by dispatchers for dispatchers is gonna go towards supporting ukraine so if you guys like something make sure you use it and we are creating extra stuff right because girls are no well keep calm and be a sassy dispatcher so that's something that's something new coming up and also what else um oh that's another thing when you guys saw today that finally we got approved for our partnership with a truck stop right so we are official partners with them and that what means for you that you guys are gonna receive those discounts when you sign up to try their tracking management software or if you sign up for their load board so finally it took us a long time to be approved and we are the only training center which got such a privilege in usa to partner up with them so we are proud of that partnership we're gonna have the live probably next week on the new features on truck stop load board what else is going on with them with their tms with their factoring and whatever whatever it's getting a little hot or maybe i'm getting too excited i think i think it's a time for me to finish my life so let's see if you guys have any questions i will answer some if not we will be done for today well, uh, happy Friday, Slava Ukraini, Heroem Slava. Okay, thank you, baby. Okay, thanks. You love blondes. Thank you. You rock. Hopefully, it's not about blondes. It's about it's about brains, right? Logic. We in logistics. We in tracking. We are changing tracking for better, and we are on a mission. We can be different colors, different races, come from different backgrounds, but it's the same mission. And the mission is to change tracking for better. But yes, thank you guys for the compliments. I would love to work under you, Alex. Uh, sounds like a plan. Hello, Alex, when you have the next back office course, are you referring to safety and compliance course? Then it's going to start October 1st. So we start in October 1st. Please use the opportunity tomorrow and book it with discount. If you're looking also for IFTA, make sure you buy that package because it's already had discount and you're getting an extra 100 discount. So this is actually the best value in the next three days. Get two classes, you are actually saving $250 off. Okay. What else? Any other questions? Um, oh, will you be discussing intermodal sometimes? Well, my previous student, Bernard, um, you know, since I do not do intermodal, Yes, I do have a knowledge, but I do not want to teach something that I don't do every day, right? I really, just a general idea, yeah, I can discuss, right? But if I am not really dealing with intermodal today, it would not be honest training, right? And you know me, I just want to make sure that I share the information that I'm 100% uh, uh capable to deliver that i am 100 percent verified by myself every day of course i can create all the classes on the dredge on the intermodal on the box trucks and everything else that's probably uh, would be good for me right i could make lots of money on those classes but it would go against my personal uh values and my personal values is if you're not doing something, you cannot really teach that 100%. I don't want to just Google, excuse me, Google that shit and then share it. No, that's not me. You guys know me, right? I teach what I teach. Thank you so much. Any questions, guys, about hiring process? Because today we were touching up about hiring. Termination of the driver. Termination has to be done. Driver has to be notified. He has to sign termination letter, right? You have to keep it on file. Let me just remind you one little thing. Lots of times you have drivers who go on vacation for more than 30 days. Well, here is a news for you. 
you have to rehire this driver again. So all of those steps have to be done again. If your driver is not driving for 30 days, you have to terminate him and you have to rehire him. So all those applications, all those forms, all those tests, drug tests, clearing house has to be redone all over. It's no way around it, okay? If your driver more than 30 days. Let's say your driver is goes on vacation for two, three days and he is in your random, random uh, pool, right? For drug and alcohol. Well, remember, remember to remove him for those what? For those two weeks, right? For those three weeks, because you don't want this driver to be randomly chosen for drug and alcohol and he is not able to do it because this would affect he's actually cdl and he cannot be go back to duty return to duty if he did not complete that random test so as a safety and compliance you do have to take care of lots and lots of things okay well we will be done today happy friday happy holidays and make sure you guys enjoying the weather, spend time with your loved ones, and keep trucking. Trucking is not going anywhere. Learn how to do honest trucking. Learn how to do better job on all the levels. Safety managers, dispatchers, a manager, human resources, owner of the trucking company, be a better driver. Finally, become that professional driver, right? Because some of the drivers, they just have the CDL. They don't even know how to check on their tires or check on their brakes. I don't know how they get that CDL, but we do have a lot of scamming uh, in getting the CDL. That's finally FMCSA did what? They passed the regulation that the schools have to be approved uh by fmcsa and they have a lot of paperwork to submit nowadays so little by little dot fmcsa catches up to all those scammers of course we have new kind of scammers and we're not gonna get rid of them but at least one person at a time you can be a better trucking trucker and i love you guys and see you soon and of course on monday guys on monday we're going to have that free class for our supporters. I see right now we have Winston Brewster watching. So every member on our YouTube channel has a chance to win that free class. And you can use it for you or your friend or your family. So if you already took the dispatch class, you can use it for the safety. So Monday night. I'm going to go live for drawing for the free class. So we're going to have a word as a thank you for whom? For our members, because our members support our mission to change trucking for better, and we support them back. And on this positive note, we will be done. Hey, Alex, thanks so much. I look forward for the next class. Yes, we are studying hard. Love you guys. and. See you soon.